assalamu alaikum and welcome back again today we are going to have the lecture number 16 and this lecture we are, go we are going to study about the uh, properties of the LTI systems until now you have covered the topic of the signals and its classification we have also talked about the system and its classific uh, classification, right? So uh, sig we define signal as a function of one uh, function of one or more than one variable that conveys some information about a phenomena in this particular course of signals and system. Uh, we'll be dealing uh, with one variable, uh, one independent variable that is uh, time or frequency so the first part of this uh, course consists of the time uh, consists of the time domain signals and systems uh, signals and the analysis of the system so the independent variable is uh, time whereas in the uh, next part we will talk about the systems in terms of another uh, signals and system in terms of another independent variable called the frequency so as we discussed uh, about the system we defined the system uh, as uh, anything that that generates a signal or that, that transmits a signal or that performs uh, some operation on the signal or that receives a signal all these things comes into the uh, category of the system so in the previous topic we talked about the properties of the system so so th th those were for the case of the general systems now we are going to discuss the properties of the LTI system So the first property we are going to talk about the commutative property. Commutative property with respect to addition, you understand that is if you add two numbers, for example, A and B, so A plus B equals to B plus A or with respect to the multiplication, A multiplied by B equals to B multiplied by A. So that means the addition and subtraction just like they hold the property of uh, commutative so so is the case for the convolution and that is if you multiply x if you convolve x of n with h of n or in case of continuous time x of t with h of t it is same as you convolve the response with the input signal right so it's same if you convolve input with the response or if you convolve response with the input signal both will result into uh, same output we can also say that uh, summation k running from minus infinity up to infinity h of k equals to a, uh, x of n minus k so this is exactly equal to uh, summation k running from minus infinity up to infinity and this is x of k right h of n minus k right similarly for the uh, continuous time case that we have right so while doing the uh, numerical problems on both a continuous time and discrete time convolution I have so many times told you that you can go it's up to you you uh, reflect and shift the input signal or you can also reflect and shift the uh, response it's up to you wherever you are comfortable you can reflect anyone right reflect and shift anyone as because it will result into same so what does it mean it means that the convolution operation also holds the property of commutative similar to addition and subtraction right so you understand in case of commutative the order doesn't matter operands can be interchanged and the result uh, will be same or they will result into same output right so 
they hold the property of the operation of convolution hold the property of uh, commutative right similarly for the case of the distributive property that we have uh, for example two system with impulse responses h1 and h2 right so it's up to in you can uh, add the two system and the resulting system is convolved with the input signal right or you can uh, find the output using both the system right you give the input signal to the uh, system one which has response h1 and you give this uh, same out, uh, input to the second system uh, having impulse response h2n and the resulting outputs are added so it will result into same output right so similar to what we had for example we had the uh, we have uh, studied about the distributive property for addition and subtraction that is for example a multiplied by b right so a multiplied by b plus c equals to a multiplied by b right plus uh, a multiplied by c So this is about the distributive property. Distributive property for the case of discrete time signal is described here and similarly for the continuous time case is described here. So we'll go quickly. So this is the graphical uh, representation of the distributive property shown on the previous slide where the right side of, it, of the equation for distributive property is this one and the one shown on the left uh, left side is this one so this is shown here for the continuous time case and for the case of discrete time we have similar arguments right so the input signal right like shown on the uh, right side in the previous slide so the input signal is coming here it is convolved with h1 of t to produce y1 of t and again the same input signal is coming here and it's convolved with the uh, second system having impulse response h2 of t and the outputs of the two systems are added to find uh, to form the final output right so similarly from the left hand side of the equation we can say that the input signal right so this two systems impulse responses if they are added right they will uh, result into h1 of t plus h2 of t and if the input signal is convolved with them it will get y of t which is same as the one we get on the uh, left side here so what it means is basically if you have two uh, LTI system having impulse response h1 of t and h2 of t based on distributive property they are actually connected in parallel so if two uh, systems two LTI systems are connected in parallel it's equivalent to having the distributive property right and their equivalent system is obtained by summing the impulse responses of the indi individual two systems so similar argument applies for the uh, discrete time case so for example we have a, a convolution sum problem right as in the example 2.2 10 in the Oppenheim book so we have the input signal which is equal to uh, as given here and we have response signal so it's very tough to find the 
uh, output for this case but if we split it into uh, two parts that is if we use the uh, distributive property we can we can easily solve the problem right the signal exists from minus infinity up to infinity and it's quite tedious and difficult to find the convolution uh, uh, sum so instead by exploiting the properties of the LTI system we can easily uh, come up with a solution that's quite straightforward right so we can uh, by knowing the uh, distributive and uh, commutative property we know that uh, x of n convolve with uh, h of n equals to uh, h of n convolve with x of n okay so we can say this is basically uh, h of n equals to u of n right and we say this convolve with one by two uh, power n u of n plus 2 power n u of minus n okay so this can I expand here and by using the distributive property we can say okay u of n can work with this so you can say that uh, u of n Convolve with uh, this is your y of n, right? So y of n equals to u of n convolve with this, right? So that means this is y of n and y of n equals to u of n convolve with 1 by 2 power n u of n and plus u of n convolve with uh, 2 power n u of minus n so you see we have split the convolution into two parts in one part we are going to find the convolution of step function with 1 by 2 power n u of n and plus in the second case uh, we convolve u of n with 2 power n u of minus n and that's quite straightforward now it's very easy to find the convolution right and for the two parts and then summing them will result into the uh, output so u of n you understand equals to one for uh, if i okay let uh, I'll do one part of this part for you and I leave the second part this one to you okay or maybe I solve this one and I leave it for you to try by yourself okay this is all the solved example of Oppenheim 
example 2.10 right so this first part I am going to uh, do it for you so at this point it has value 1 here it will be 1 by 2 right here it will be 1 by 4 1 by 8 and so on right now the uh, to plot the second part just uh, maybe I plot it here the second part so the second part is just the step function so you understand it is just I write uh, u of n okay so u of n so u of n you understand equals to 1 for n is equal to or greater than 0 right so this is one for all values of n then the second part to find the conv convolution is the replacing um, n by k so it's u of k to be u of k right and this also n is replaced by k so this also uh, it will be 2 power k right and u of minus k so this signal exists right so we understand the signal exists for uh, negative values of n for positive values of n this is zero okay now easy is that we reflect this signal so let's reflect and shift the signal so i have plotted the sig uh, response sig uh, the uh, response signal and shifted it by a factor of uh, reflected and shifted by a factor of n so now the signal is previously it was from 0 up to infinity you understand now it will be from n up to minus infinity which is shift uh, reflected and shifted form of the signal the next step I am going to do is that you know very well that uh, that is we do the uh, multiplication right so we multiply the corresponding values and then sum them so if you look at this one this signal the response uh, the input signal exists right that is it it has non-zero values from minus infinity up to zero right so that means if you multiply this one uh, the we, we have non-zero overlap right so if I shift the signal again we have the same result that we have non-zero overlap for all values right so if I keep moving to the right that is in this side right so a point will reach that is zero right so if it comes here that means or maybe uh, I make the signal here so that it gives you clearer understanding but anyway if I keep moving the signal to the right side right at zero we will have the overlap right again because that's we, we have non-zero overlap from minus infinity up to zero but the moment I cross the zero that is I come here at one at two at three and so on right so we will re we realize that this signal although non-zero right in the for the positive values of k also for the positive values of k are in other words for the positive values of the n but this signal will be zero for the positive values of the k right so uh, because we are moving uh, n so we might call it the positive values of the uh, in fact we must call it the positive values of the n okay so that means we have two intervals for this case first interval is when n is so that means the upper limit for this will depend on n right so it means that we have uh, two cases uh, or two different intervals in interval one we say when n is uh, less than zero right when n is less, less than we are somewhere here 
so whether we are here 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 so that means we can say y of n equals to uh, summation now k running from so you understand because this signal up to infinity exists right up to minus infinity exists and this signal also is non-zero up to minus infinity so in that case we say that k is basically equal to minus infinity up to n and the value of the signal that will be equal to because you understand this is step uh, signal and this one is 2 power k so step function is 1 so that means 1 into 2 power k equals to 2 power k so we can straight away write 2 power k right so this is the case when the uh, n is less than 0 so n less than 0 anywhere right here so this is the case for that and the second case is when you keep on moving the signal and you cross the uh, zero right so that means the second case will be when uh, let me write it here when n is equal to r greater than zero so when n is equal to 0 or greater than 0 in that case this signal is crossing the 0 point right so because this signal exists from minus infinity up to 0 so that means we can say that for that case y of n will be uh, something constant right because it's independent of n now and why it is independent of n now because uh, this signal is zero from uh, one right from one up to infinity so although you are moving this one away so if n is greater than uh, or equal to zero so we have uh, summation and that is k running from minus infinity up to uh, zero and this is 2 power k okay so this one you do it by yourself that's also quite straightforward we have done so many examples on the convolution sum and convolution integral so i hope you shouldn't have any issue so this is how the distributive property can be exploited to find solution in a very simple way otherwise that's very tedious and tough because the input signal exists from minus infinity up to infinity the next property is associative properties so as you might have idea in case of multiplication and addition the state uh, associative property can be described as uh, so it means that uh, it does not matter in which we in which order we convolve right so that means we convolve the two systems responses first and then the resulting response is convolved with x of n or we convolve the input signal with the uh, first system's impulse response and then the resulting signal is convolved with the impulse response of the second system so that basically shows the connection of LTI systems so that means the series interconnection of the two LTI, LTI systems is a result of the associative property that is uh, for example, we have a system. So uh, this is the resulting system. So you have the input and associative property is basically the series interconnection of the two LTI system, right? So it doesn't matter where, where the 
you connect them in any order that means you can re reverse the order you can put the system with h uh, with response h2 and here and it's followed by the h1 and and so on right or you can also the uh, they can also be replaced by a system having impulse response equal to if we because these two are convolved so if we have another system that has uh, impulse response equals to the convolution of the individual impulse responses of h uh, right these two systems for example this equal to h of n right so it can be replaced by this or we can say this is basically equivalent to this one right so similar argument applies to the uh, continuous time case so system with and uh, without memory so in case of general system we said that a system is said to have memory if the present value of the output depends on past or future or both and we said uh, we defined the system without memory as the one where the present value of the output depends on the present value of the input so in case of uh, linear time invariant systems because uh, we say that the impulse response of the LTI system completely characterizes, characterizes the LTI systems right so let's see based on the uh, impulse response we can tell whether a given system has memory or the system is memory less right so in terms of impulse response we say a system is said to be an LTI system is said to be memory less if the impulse response of the system is zero for n is not equal to zero. So such a system is called memory less system. So because we know output of an LTI uh, output of an LTI system equals to y of n equals to h of n convolved with uh, x of n so we can write it as uh, summation k running from minus infinity up to infinity uh, h of k into x of n minus k now for this system to be memory less the output y of n should only depend on x of n right so when uh, it only depends on x of n that means k should be equal to zero right so for this term right because we defined the memory less system right where the present value y n should depend on x n now for x n k should be equal to zero so when k equals to zero we say uh, we are left with h of 0 times x of n right so this is what we define for the case of for general case right in general we said a system is memory less when uh, the present output depends on present input so that means we can write that is h of k in this case equals to 0 when k is not equal to 0 right so 
for our system to be memory less the present value of the output should depend on present value of input so if i write it in terms of the impulse response so that means h of k should be equal to 0 when k is not equal to 0 or in general i can write h of n equals to 0 when n is not equal to 0 so similarly we can write for the continuous time case that h of t equals to 0 for t is not equal to 0 so this is the condition for a system to be memory less right so if we represent h of 0 by k so we can write that output equals to k times the input so such a system will will uh, can reduce to uh, can be a scaling system so in case k equals to 1 in that case we can say that the system is identity system whatever you give it the input you get the same at the output but in case for k is not equal to 1 it has some other value in that case it's just in scaling system right so that's the definition right so for the system to be memory less in case of LTI system, its response must be zero for k for its argument is not equal to zero, right? So this is the condition. So similar uh, arguments uh, is for the continuous time case. So we can say that h of t equals to zero when t is not equal to zero. So that means uh, h of t equals to k times uh, right impulse of t or y of t equals to k times the x of t so it's the same thing so the next system we are going to talk about is the uh, inverse system so we have defined the invertibility that a system is said to be invertible if distinct input produces distinct output right so in that case we wrote that uh, if a system is uh, invertible in that case uh, its inverse exists and when the system is uh, connected in cascade with its inverse then whatever you give at input you get at the output so for example uh, uh, this is the system okay so we have a system this one and uh, it has in right this system one that was what we did for the general case not the LTI case that we give it at input and we get some output y of t and if the system is invertible and we place its inverse in series right let it has the uh, let me rep represent it by h inverse so in that case whatever you give it at input you get it uh, output that is the input was x of t and the output is also x of t because uh, it performs some operation on the input and it produces the y of t and again if we apply the inverse operation of whatever is here you get the output which is equal to this one so in case of uh, uh, LTI system we say this one has impulse response right this is x of t or uh, maybe I just uh, right here and so for example this is the this system has impulse response of h uh, of t okay and this system has impulse response let me denote it by minus h inverse of t so 
whatever you give at input you get the same at output that means uh, x of t if I write it mathematically it is x of t when we say it's convolve with uh, h of t and uh, whatever we get here is again convolved with the second system that has uh, impulse response h inverse of t so we get x of t so it means that because uh, just by the uh, definition of the by the uh, associative property we can also write it like this x of t convolve with uh, h of t into h inverse of t results into x of t so that means uh, you see the convolution of h of t with its inverse whatever you get here you convolve with it with x of t so it should get into x of t so that means it should be the identity of the convolution this should result into con identity of the convolution which is impulse impulse is identity of the convolution like we have we say mathematical identity you and uh, in uh, not mathematical additive identity so you understand what is I additive identity additive identity is zero right additive additive identity is zero so whatever you add additive identity right identity so like you have additive identity that is zero you add zero with anything right you get the same thing or we have the uh, multiplicative identity that is one so whatever you multiply with one you get the same thing so just like in other operation that is multiplication and addition um, convolution is also an operation so the uh, identity of the convolution is impulse right you convolve anything with impulse and you get the same so that means uh, x of t convolved with impulse of t will be equal to x of t so if the two systems impulse responses they are inverse then the convolution of the those will result into impulse right so for the case of this uh, 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 continuous time impulse of t and for the case of discrete time it will be uh, impulse of n okay so shown here is a system y of t equals to x of t 
the uh, x of t minus t naught. You have to tell whether this system is invertible. So if t naught is uh, positive, you understand. So this system is basically introducing delay, right? Y of t will be the delayed version of x of t. But if t naught is negative, in that case, uh, y of t will be the advanced version of the uh, input signal, right? So what will be the impulse response of this system, right? So we know the impulse response is defined as the output of the system when the input is impulse. So that means we can write h of t for this will be equal to, uh, right? Because the by definition, output of the system when input is impulse, right? So when input is x of t, it's y of t. When input is impulse, this will, so that means we can write that impulse of t minus t naught. So this is the impulse response of the of this system. Now, if you have a signal input at it, that is x of t. So uh, x of t convolved with h of t will result into right. So if I convolve the a signal x of t with this uh, impulse response are with this system. So you know it will be equal to x of t convolve with impulse of t minus t naught. So you understand that basically impulse is identity of the convolution. So that means if we convolve any signal with impulse, we get the same signal. Now, if the impulse is shifted, the signal will also be shifted. So that means uh, it will produce uh, x of, produce output, which will be x of t minus t naught. Now to recover the signal, right? All we need is a system having impulse response equal to, so this this one, so the inverse of this will be something like, uh, let me denote it with H prime, okay? Or maybe with, it's up to you. Okay, let's de denote it by H prime, okay? Or previously I have used the uh, H inverse, so let's use the uh, H inverse. So H inverse of this system will be simply uh, impulse of T plus uh, T naught. So if we cascade the system with the impulse of uh, impulse response h of t which is equal to uh, impulse of t minus t naught with this impulse response then whatever we give at input we get the same at output right so that means uh, we get this thing okay so if I So this is the input. If I convolve this with uh, t minus t naught, if I convolve this with uh, uh, impulse of t plus 
T naught. So I obtain X of T minus T naught and plus T naught. So T naught, T naught cancel and I get X of T, right? Because I have convolved here the signal with uh, impulse of T plus T naught, okay? So because impulse is the uh, convolution identity, so if you convolve anything with impulse, you get the same thing. So if the impulse is shifted, you get the shifted version of the signal. So I think that's all for today. We will uh, continue from here next week. Allah Hafiz.